Welcome to your Inspirational Astrology Horoscope for Friday and, well, this full moon will go into actually Saturday, February 23rd through the 24th, 2024. I'm Astrologer Dave Palmer, the Leo King here to illuminate the collective consciousness. Well, thanks so much for being a part of HighVibe.tv. Truly appreciate your membership. If you're not on HighVibe.tv, I would definitely be part of it now. All the awesome shows, all the apps that we have that are state-of-the-art with the full-blown spiritual community inside of it, whether you're on any app that there's out there, Apple TV, Roku, we're actually pretty cool in Apple Vision Pro too. Make sure that you check us out, highvibe.tv. Also, uh, April 7th and the 8th, I will be out at the total solar eclipse that's going to be happening with Team Light. Go to teamlightstore.com forward slash events. I'm going to be there out there with Rich Lop and everyone from Team Light and so many other great speakers. We'll be in Bastrop, Texas, which is just outside of Austin. Definitely get your tickets now. Leo King 10 is for 10% off. The tickets are 333. And it's a couple days and it's going to be awesome to actually be at that total solar eclipse. It won't be happening again over America for another 20 plus years. Plus, this is going to be right in the heart of it all in Texas, right where it's going to be 100%. So definitely if you want to go through a once of a lifetime event together and be there with all the light workers, this is the event to go to. Also, I just got booked for the Disclosure Fest. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be on the solstice for three days out at Lake Castaic. You can go to DisclosureFest.com and actually get part of this. It's gonna be Stairway to the Stars, so it's Fade to Black with Disclosure Fest. It's gonna be outdoor, camping, swimming. I'm DJing, I'm doing astrology talks. There's so many awesome, it's an awesome lineup. It's so awesome to finally have another good, awesome festival outdoor with astrology, with DJing, with you can go out and swim, camp, the whole nine. Definitely be part of that too. That's gonna to be on June 21st through the 23rd of 2024 and with a stacked lineup. It's awesome. Check it out. All right, let's check out this full moon in Virgo at a very beyond auspicious time. We're beyond that. I just want to say that before we look at this chart. Um, we have a couple of charts to look at. Uh, this is just a very, very potent, to say the least, time of change and a lot of mutability, a lot of mutating energy. Now, the reason why, of course, I say that is because um, that full moon will be in Virgo. But right before we get there, I thought I would just stick here with this chart first. Um, I really am looking at how we're seeing Mercury on Friday ingress into Pisces, its fall position. Not an easy place, not going to lie. And especially with the sun that is in Pisces with Saturn. And remember, Saturn made its ingress into Pisces in March of 2023, we're in a weird auspicious moment because the Sun Saturn have not made their conjunction in Pisces yet. So you've been through a basically a year transit of Saturn and still haven't had the Sun made it make the conjunction. And this full moon's going to be highlighting that, but it's also these stelliums everywhere. We've got this Mars Venus conjunction that has just completed and the square to Jupiter. We've got Jupiter Uranus that are coming close together. We got Mars, Venus, Pluto together. Then we got this Sun, Mercury, Saturn, which they all will conjunct at nine degrees coming up here right before the leap year day, which is coming up in a week. So, uh, you know, the only planet that's really alone is Neptune, although it's not alone. It's the ruler of Pisces. And Poseidon, Neptune is sitting there watching this big triple conjunction about to go down. 
So there's a lot of potency, but remember, we just got out of a lot of Aquarius, but there's still a lot of Aquarius left. All this fixed energy, plus with all this Taurus and the big squares. Having this moon that's going to be full in Virgo, we're going to have to find flexibility, but it ain't going to be easy, especially with this Mars-Venus conjunction. And with Mars-Venus being an Aquarius, you know, they actually met up two years ago and did make their conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius. But this is even more interesting to me that Pluto is here. So the last two new moons had Pluto in the same sign as the new moons, right? We had that new moon Capricorn, then we had that new moon in Aquarius. Pluto was in Capricorn for the new moon in Cap, and then we had Pluto that made its ingress into Aquarius, and we had the new moon there. So this is a full moon that's the last full moon with this rare phase that we've been going through of having these back-to-back -back new moons with Pluto. So there is a lot of, I'll, I'll call it pressure that needs to find its release point, And I don't think this full moon's going to do it enough, which makes it even more interesting to me. And especially with Mars, Venus, these two, they are having to be the rulers of the signs in which the, the lunar nodes are in, right? And that North node is in Aries. So Mars that rules Aries is activated and the South nodes activated with Venus, of course, being the ruler of Libra and they're both together and they're squaring Jupiter, the great benefic. Now what's interesting is this North node Chiron has been playing out. We're not going to see these two make their conjunction again until 2038. But remember that this is an Aries, this is Chiron. I know you can hear the basics like, oh, this is a great time for healing. It is, but it's a lot deeper than that. This is a moment in your life to realize it's okay that nothing looks, feels normal, okay? Especially this is about you realizing that this persona, this idea of what you are, is not really what you are. I mean, part of it is, but it really is not the true essence of your divine soul. The soul that really, when we die, we won't remember this experience. It's the Dharma that moves us into a completely new space. And that, that's really where the helio astrology starts to take place, which I'm going to show, but let's get to the full moon chart because there's a lot about how some people you might, you might call it ego death. Some people are also rooting the ego on really extreme right now. Although there's a different way to look at it. It's about what you do in this life with things, right? So what you do with your life, like it's not about ego. It's not about like, well, I, what's well, my identity and how does it do it? It's like what you do with it. And that's what a lot of this Jupiter Uranus stuff is also about in Taurus. Like, like what are you doing with your life? Like, what are you doing with your soul? Like, are you actually doing anything that's like using these amazing, very precious, very rare experience that we all have here on earth? Like, are you doing something with that? Or are you just like, Hey, hey I don't know. So let's look at this full moon. It's pretty, you know, there's so much happening prior to this full moon and building up. And then there's so much happening after it that it's like, oh my gosh. Um, talk about frustration a little bit here. The reason why I say that, and, and you know, I'm not going to put a negative aspect to this because I don't think that it's negative. I just think that, um, again, that persona, that character, that idea of what, who you think you are, especially that ego self is not going to be happy, right? Like it's fixated even with this Mars, Venus, it, it's like Mars is like, yes, Venus finally showed up. Remember Mars was in Leo, Venus ingressed into Leo back in the summer, right before we had the Venus retrograde for the first time in our lives in Leo. And no, Venus didn't meet up with Mars. So, so right now it's happening in the opposite sign. And this is really interesting because it's like, oh, Mars is all stoked, but it's Chiron. It's kind of like there's something flat, weird, off about everything right now. That even the desires that we want don't 
there's something always like something like all the pieces don't fit fully and because maybe they do in this area but then in this area they don't and that's this also big square to jupiter and with venus on this full moon within one degree the great and the and the great benefic and and having this lower malefic or sorry the great benefic and the, the lower benefic i like mars Saturn more i'm more of a mars Saturn person than of jupiter venus i really feel that having the two benefic square here with a moon in a full moon opposite saturn that the sun has not met with yet in pisces mercury this is also a full moon and what is virgo oh mercury is the ruler of virgo so this is a very mercurial moment when Neptune is the ruler of all right now. Okay. Neptune rules all the planets right now. That's the home Pisces. Neptune's there. Poseidon's sitting there. Saturn's in there. The sun's in there. Mercury's in there. This full moon is in opposition to the ruler of the house it's in. Then the sun is like, I have to finally face this Saturn Pisces. So this is where, this is also Saturn Neptune that I haven't met in 500 years, right? They, they traveled together in 1523 in Pisces. So it's been 500 years and I can even meet in Pisces. This, uh, trying to find and search is not going to get you anywhere, Okay. Like searching for a better life, searching for a better feeling. What you have to really focus on right now is what's wrong? Nothing. This is all about detaching and getting out of these extreme freakouts, worries, doubts, and especially the things that block us from using our beautiful life to do, create, to make things happen. It's not so much about the essence of how grandiose it can be or how big it is. It's just about the natural beauty of life and the experience of it. But we live in a world now where, you know, people just want to power drive and to have something. And that's okay. That's part of whatever. No attachment to that either. But this is about allowing the ebbs and the flow, having the spiritual energy, letting the, the higher energies, which means you're in a body. So experiencing the world as it is, learning to be that body and float through the water. It's not like you have control of it, but you have the ability to allow it to flow. It's kind of funny because I put the, thumbnail for this whole entire full moon is and Poseidon on the moon itself with a full moon he doesn't have cell phone service and it's got a sign that says no water even though it's so ironic because we're in heavy water you know this chart already reminds me of 2013 when we had the massive six to seven bodies that were in Pisces and I remember doing the new moon that was a solar eclipse and I remember doing that uh, or is 2014 the solar eclipse in the 2013 there was a bunch of planets there too the same amount it was like crazy those two years and I remember being like feeling like I was stoned when it was weird because I had actually quit drugs back then in 2012 um still been sober um but it was crazy because I felt like I was losing it but this 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 can make people feel really lost and then desperately try and grab or to have some sort of security where, you know, I'll be honest with you, a lot of the security can really be in places that are really not secure at all because this Mars Venus conjunction can definitely be like with the square to Jupiter, like believing in some sort of like saving grace or some sort of like, Oh, this is going to make me feel better. So I got to do it. Um, you know, th this is not the time for you to get lost in, you know, this is the answer. Right now, we don't have any fucking answers except for the stuff from the past that's revealed itself. 
This is about, it's okay to move forward with not knowing everything. It's okay to move forward with things feeling off and weird. And what we need to release is the stress. The stress of feeling like everything has to be figured out, that everything needs to be figured out now, or feeling too stressed like, oh my God, the cell phones went down, the X flare, sol solar flare, X class flares, and everybody, you know, like relax for a second. Okay? We need to not allow ourselves because what I am seeing on the deepest part of all this is that Pluto now at one degree of Aquarius with this Venus Mars conjunction, this stellium that we've been going through, this is the seduction of, I want something to fix my life now without realizing, you know, the easy route or what looks like an easy fix is not of quality. The best things in life are not Jiffy Lube. <laughs> okay. If you drive a shitty car, you can go to Jiffy Lube. If you drive a nice car, you can't. This is not a jiffy lube in life, right? You can't do that with your relationships. You can't do that with your job. You Right now, you have to like look at this Taurus, Jupiter, and Uranus as like, okay, the passage in the doorway is being wide open that there's tons of solutions, but they might not be easy, and that's okay because the best things in life aren't free, right? The best things in life, when it means, it's not about money. The best things in life, it takes longer to build a, pyramid in Egypt it takes longer, right? For the earth to create a waterfall. Oh, you know, it's down in South America somewhere in the jungle. The best things in life take time. And so this is where it's about having that understanding because there's a lot of like, I'm not going to lie. When I see this chart with Juno conjunct black moon Lilith with the weird quincunx to Chiron and the North Node, that, like that transit right there alone. And then with this Mars, Venus and square to Jupiter, like this can, this can be like people getting really mistaken when it comes to, you know, if you're into the twin flame thing or relationships or in weird situations, like this is just a time to just keep steadily taking things one day at a time, not making dramatic moves like making sure, especially with the South Node Libra, right? Like we don't want to become, you know, Humpty Dumpty that has a great fall here. And even with the North Node being conjunct Chiron, this is not a typical North Node Aries. Okay. Like this is not a typical North Node Aries. That that You can't treat it as the same. You have to remember this is Chiron. And even for the fact that there's so many planets in Pisces that sit to the 12th sign, right? From that point. And if you were to think of it from the North node standpoint, right? We're getting close to the North node at zero Aries by the end of the year, which is a draconic chart itself. And let me tell you, I, I bet you there's already somebody out there who might have done it, but I bet you well, less than 0.05% of astrology or astrology lovers have done it yet. It's not a good chart. Okay. When you have that much in the 12th house, right? To the node itself. And you have to remember when things are waxing or things are waning, right? So if we look at it from the sun's point of view, you know, you have a lot of planets that Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus here. These are in the giving, but there's this wanting to take on the other side. And then if you look at it from the moon and you look at what's in the, the waxing, there's just some wanting to get, but there's this deep yearning to try and have, to, to want to take. And when I mean take, there's give and take in life. We're givers or we're willing to accept. So maybe I'll call it accept. But from both these standpoints, the sun and the moon, this full moon, the give and the take energy is really off. Okay? So it's like we really want to give, but then we feel like, we're, you know, we're not getting back what we want. And then the things that we want to get back, we're not, we're not willing to, you know, there's something weird about the giving to it. Right? So like this is where passions can run into really weird directions. This is where... Um, people can make their greatest mistakes in their life by, you know, it's not so much what somebody does. It's what you continue to do and continue to do and continue to do and stay fixated on and then be lost with all this Pisces. And then with Mercury here, 
is already lost. And with the conjunction of this triple conjunction stellium of the sun, that's going to have its Kazemi with Mercury while the sun Saturn conjunction happens, it's going to be nuts. Now I've predicted for months and I've put all my charts out. You all know it's out there on everything that I'm predicting. And I've before, it wasn't even about the sun Saturn and, 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 and Mercury chart. It was much more than that. It was using Nostradamus. It was using John D it's using a bunch of different aspects to understand what's about to happen or even the Helio with Jupiter Uranus, which I, I want to go into one sec here on this full moon. Cause this is pretty crazy. Um, Oh, sorry. I'm using uh, my PC here. Uh, and then I'm also using my Mac. I'm using my Mac on this, but I'm like using the mouse and I'm using NDI to do this. So I have to like use my mouse up. Hold on. There we go. So if we were to look at the Helio for this, Don't worry, your boy, your boy has the best charts on Astro Gold. I have my own wheels that I make that are fucking, that are, oh, is it not hooked up to this one? Oh, yeah, it is. There, there we go. All right. Uh, no ounces. I make this one myself, but it's worth it. All right. So on this full moon, from the sun's point of view here, and if you don't play with Helio, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, if you're one of those flat earthers, good luck explaining where do the planets go. But if you could see, we have Jupiter Uranus getting ready to make their conjunction, this 13 year transit, that of course is a big deal. It's really interesting though, that here's Mercury on its way to Saturn. The same thing that we're seeing. Remember Mercury, there is no retrogrades in Helio. So boom, Mercury's doing fast. Not only just on the geo side of things, we're seeing Mercury at its full speed heading into Pisces, his fall position. People could be really slipping on big banana peels right now. And this is where you could also be losing your mind. You could do, you could be in some really weird territory that you don't need to. We have Mars that still has to actually come into this big Pluto energy from a helio point, point forward. And even Venus, there's still have not, it's the illusion that something's, together when it's not together yet. And that's where it's going to get interesting in the week that follows this full moon, because the biggest events are going to start to take place that are going to last for over a year. And it's going to make the last four years look like nothing. Like that was just a walk in the park. So I would say pay attention right now. Because right now, this is a, you know, a, a very important time. Even this full moon has Mars trying Jupiter and Uranus, right? Like, see a bigger picture, right? Have a better understanding of, 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 of your needs and where things are. But, you know, there's still a lot of extreme open space, right? So over 180 degrees of the helio is empty. Don't count Juno, okay? Yeah, the Earth's here. But planetary wise, everything's on one side. And then we're seeing, we've been seeing that except for this full moon, right? So whether it's the earth or it's the full moon, to the geo, it's the full moon and the helio, it's the earth. Everything's within 180 degrees. So we need to keep going through the experience. We need to keep experiencing things, keep the flow going and not make major determinations right now not make major decisions, not be stuck on something that we have to do. And it has to be that way. Like learn to have your ebb and flow and then do not get caught up in the illusion. Like this is the big moment I've seated. And this is who I'm going to be with Jupiter and square with Mars, Venus and Aquarius here in the square to Jupiter, North node, Chiron conjunct the South node opposing Chiron, the North node conjunct Chiron. Don't you dare get lost in this moment and to do something stupid. There is nothing right now to go into craziness with of some sort of like gung ho. This is it. This is my life. And this is the determination of it. This is a moment of like, um, you know what? Let me, let me keep assessing. Let me keep chilling out and assessing. Let me keep staying on top of things that I enjoy and not freaking out and then making decisions off freakouts or decisions off really just because 
the taking part of you wants more. This is a time to keep giving, not keeping a track record of what you're being received with. This is definitely Pisces, but this is definitely a weird moment if you just were to look at it from the Earth's point of view, from the sun. I don't have that right now, but I'll, I'll pull me away. Um, from the Earth's point of view here, you know, we're at a position to where, yeah, from Earth's point of view, it looked like Venus and Mars made the conjunction, but this is from the sun's point of view. And the, from the sun's point of view, Mercury is ready to come around and make its conjunction with Saturn and oppose the Earth at the same time in the four days that are coming up. And that is a big trigger point. The other thing, too, is that we're about to see this Venus-Mars head into Pluto that's in Aquarius for the next 21 years, all right? So you have to remember, like, this this is now from a helio perspective and a geo perspective. The Mercury-Saturn conjunction is in perfect alignment, of course, because this is Mercury's exact opposition to the Earth from the Sun's point of view, and it's happening with Saturn there. And we've been in a Saturn world for the last seven, eight years, seven. So... This is, you know, be, this is the full moon to just like let go of all of your stress and all of the things that make you unhappy and not, and like, you know, like a stress case to where you're fucking having hemorrhoids or whatever you're having or whatever trip outs you're having. Like, relax for a sec here because you don't want to start sh getting stressed and fucking. It was funny at Conscious Life Expo when I was. I got asked a question on the astrology panel about like what to expect. And I was like, well, or I just said something. I'm like, don't have a hemorrhoid during this time and don't have like a hernia uh, because there's going to be a lot of people having that. And that includes ladies too because there's nothing worth all that extra stress about. Really? Like this is not a time for you to, re like you're going to have to just find the flow in this moment. You're going to have to realize that Reality is not what we all expected it to ever be, you know? And the fact that we expected reality to, be, reality to be a certain way, that's what you have to let go of, right? Like, well, reality was supposed to look like this. My life was supposed to look like this. This is North Node Chiron and Aries. I was born with North Node Chiron and Gemini, okay? So, and very tight orb. So I live a North Node Chiron life. And you know what? Nobody would ever guess I did this for a living, including myself. So, you know, but, and I, and, and even with my communication, I was shy. I know, but now I talk and talk and talk, right? So people are like, you, you know, with the Aries, it's like, oh, I, I thought life was supposed to look this way. I thought I was supposed to be this. The, this is, fuck the whole idea of ego death and playing that. This is just where it's like, if you're just like trying to hold on to what, like what you need and what you want, uh, <laughs> will the world even be able to provide it? Like what? Like let go of the attachment to some sort of need and want right now, and you will feel free. When you let go of that, you're gonna feel so much better. This is where we are backed up. Most of the planets are at the last two signs of the zodiac, and then we've got Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. That's it. North Node and Aries with with, with Chiron. You know, there's a lot of people who are alone out there. They're afraid of relationships. There's a lot of people alone out there because they don't, they only focus on themselves. There's so many people out there that, especially with all these planets that are on just one side of this whole zodiac, I mean, like they're too afraid to experience life and keep experiencing life doesn't mean that you have to go full fledged into the craziest experiences 24 seven. But, you know, that there's a lot of life force that we all have. And, you know, what projects can you do? What things can you be doing with your life instead of sitting there on the couch and stressing? Or looking at an empty bank account and then crying about it instead of doing something about it. Or looking at a fucking problem and not doing something about it, but just continue to be sweating over it. You're going to have to find that we have to have compassion. But the main part is that compassion within yourself can sometimes be your hindrance where you just start, you know, forming that little like sorry little victim inside which ain't, ain't going to do shit. Right? So actually the best compassion we can have is like, why are you being a little bitch inside? It's okay that you were, but let's get out of that, right? Yeah, let's stop being a little bitch inside. Okay, great. 
everything's going to be all right. Everything looks crazy. I know. But it's more about the look of things looking crazy. And it's not so much that things really are. And we have to re remind ourselves that we can't lose our balance because our ego is so thirsty, let's say. Rahu and Chiron. The problem with Rahu and Chiron is, now the Vedics don't teach this because they don't use Chiron. But if I was a Vedic astrologer and we included Chiron for a second, it would be like the hungry person who just wants whatever it wants, but it just keeps eating whether it's food or hooking up with people or something where everything's not right. Oh, the, there was an expiration date. It's kind of bad meat, but it tastes okay. Why did I hook up with that person? That person's gross or that person's weird or that person's not available or that, right? Like, you know, like there's all these things that just are not normal. And not eccentric either, because when you're dealing with Uranus, you're dealing with eccentricity. You're not dealing with that right now. You're dealing with this like stale energy. And the only way you're going to fulfill yourself in Taurus is you have to have that value within yourself. You have to have that self-worth and you have to have those skills and you have to do something with them. You came here in this life to do something. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be the most grandiose, like I said, spiritual thing. And that's where I think a lot of people are getting lost with this Mars-Venus conjunction. Like, I need some grandiose thing to make me feel better in my life. No, you don't. Might look at what you already have and what you're doing and if you're doing something with it. And what are you doing? You know, you don't need to be the world savior, nor do you need to be, you know, understanding how everything works. But, you know, it, it would be horrible to be living your life with this reality check that it's that's why i put poseidon up on the moon with no water and him with no with a phone and he has no service you know he's a water god he's the god of of the ocean he's the god of he's the roman god of of, of neptune he's he's got the trident he's the brother of jupiter he does he he He's not meant to be in the moon, on the moon, right? And so this opposition to, to Neptune's whole house with all these planets and Saturn and shit, this is going to be tough growing up and maturity of emotions. And those emotional maturity levels are going to be a reality check on where you're drifting too far out. Especially with an ego or a desire or more importantly, just like... It's okay if you don't have a grip, but don't start doing radical emotional freakouts over, over trying to find a solution that's probably crazier than a solution. Or, you know, people might be acting weird right now. That's normal. Everybody's going through a lot of shit. We've had three X-class solar flares in the last like 20, now it's like 36 hours I'm doing this video. Okay, like... We're all frazzled out. All the stuff about the, the COVID shots fucking been exposed more than ever. Okay? Including the Red Cross helping us finally prove that we, we, we were all saying out there as truthers that fucking knew the truth. Right? And like, so you have a world right now where you probably have, if you have, let's say, two-thirds of Americans that took it, and then you have two-thirds of the world, maybe a little more that took it, you have at least a third of those two thirds having a fucking full blown panic attack right now. Okay. They're, they, they're wondering if they're going to wake up. They're wondering if they're going to be okay. They're wondering like what the fuck is going on. They probably are feeling things that we couldn't even imagine with having their DNA altered and we have to be compassionate for them. But you have to remember that at the same time, they are going to go do crazy shit to go make themselves feel better. So they don't have to feel all these crazy things that are happening. Could you imagine me going through that right now? Being exposed like to to all this crazy shit that, that they were lied to and they're good people, right? So they're fucking having to deal with it in a crazy way. But it's putting us into a new place collectively. You know? Even energetically. Or even the Pfizer stuff came out about the shedding, right? And like they have all the documents and people going into fucking... 
whether it's babies that their parents got vaxxed and they, they have it all over them and all this shit like it's or people going into grocery stores who had it all and fucking people having to walk out okay the, the, it's all in their documents it's all out like the last week has been beyond enormous of exposure it, we're about to, uh, to get the the big red herring that they're going to do to make people try and forget and be there for people who are suffering through the panic and the anxiety they have that are even if they're still alive right And that, you know, even for them, it's going to be okay. There's going to be solutions. Just it's hard to see everything right now. And we have to start believing in those things. We have to start, you know, being cool and coming together, having good conversations about things. But this Mercury in Pisces is going to be tough because it's just looking ahead at Saturn. It's just looking at challenge and challenge. And so same with the sun. And we haven't had the sun meet with Saturn in Pisces. Okay. For this Saturn cycle, you know, last time was in the 90s when Pluto was leaving Scorpio and ingressed into Sag. So similar transit. That's why this is an X factor moment coming after this full moon. Even the Antigia of Pluto now at one goes to, to now to 28, something like that Scorpio. And then if you really think about like the Antigia of where we were with Mercury, when the, the, phones went out like I was using my prediction last night with Rich I was thinking of the Antigia of Mercury Antigia at 29 Sag or sorry 29 Aquarius to zero Scorpio and Pluto squaring that spot that's how I was able to know there'd be a communication issue but like you got to do that stuff in your head you got to know the Antigia you got to know the Helio you got to know this other stuff so if you want to learn from me, you can be on highvibe.tv and be a premium member and you get all my schools that I've, well, I've done for the last, well, I've been doing them for 13 years, but I redid them all in awesome order for the last seven years in the most professional way and the most badass deep schools. So if you want to really like learn astrology in the craziest ways and all my hypergate, my Saturn match class, all that stuff, you got to be on high, high vibe. You, you, I've done it to where you don't have to like buy schools. All these people out there are selling stuff. Like I do it to where it's like, a, here's a cheap subscription. Boom. You have access to everything. And on the best platform, you're not having to log in all weird. You're fucking through your phone, fucking all badass, fucking top technology. I'm, I'm a Taurus moon. I'm a fucking double Leo. I don't fuck with you guys. I give you guys the best shit there is out there. And if you want to keep playing on Patreon land with people that are just fucking using Patreon and all that shit and they charge you 30 bucks and they give you like fucking a couple videos, I don't understand what you guys are doing. I really don't. I know my value. I know my shit and I keep it low and I have kept it low through the whole fucking time because I'm making the spiritual network for all of us. And I'm, you know, when, when those spiritual people out there that I get over YouTube because it's such a fucking cesspool are ready to go on a spiritual network and band together and do light work. Let me know. Stop being so afraid. Stop living like squalor. You know, Michael Erlewine said it best in an interview at 2018 UAC. He never understood the astrology community much because he goes, most astrologers don't make money. They don't know how to make real money. And then they fucking get pissed and like get all weird and jealous of each other because they don't, you know. And I, I always laughed at that because I was like, it's true. Uh, and I, and I just think I, I just laugh at it right now too. I just laugh at all these people thinking that they're a big deal. Cause like you fucking made it on TikTok and you fucking, what you bought a fucking car, you leased a car. Oh my God. Like, are you ready to go help people and go make a mark and actually do something bigger than that? Like I spent all the money and the money I make on building a network for everybody else and to launch people and to help others. I got past that point of like, Ooh, I bought a car and I got a nice place over 10 years ago, way over. So, you know, when I do this work, it's about dedication. It's not about trying to like look cool and do a cool new TikTok thing. Or, you know, you guys remember me. I used to take model pics and shit. I used to be like, look at me. I'm the fucking Leo King and shit. Like, I don't give a fuck about that shit now. I was there, but you can see who's in that space right now. And it's weird that when I was doing that, I was screamed at. Now you guys are clapping that kind of shit on. At least I led the way. 
but you can also tell who's really in that space now because I showed you it. And they're far away from actually knowing what to do because I don't see any of them building something for a community. It's, it's just for themselves. And we're in Pluto Aquarius now. And let's hope that people can do something spiritual and create something spiritual more than a video. Remember, Pisces is about selfless service. What do you do for selfless service for the collective? And you know what? You don't have to answer that. You just have to go do it. And that's between you and God. That's between you and, 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 and the divine love that's out there, right? You don't have to prove it. But with all this Aquarius and all this Pisces, it's complex. It's, you know, it reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, people are going to get all weird out there, but you know, Aleister Crowley was probably one of the best, I would say Neptune Uranus astrologers there ever was, especially because he was doing it in the late 1800s before he got into all of his devil shit. But his book on Neptune and Uranus is the best. And I'm not going to say it verbatim, but it's something like, you know, Neptune is the outpost to the sun. And the sun is the fortress. So if Neptune's the outpost to the fortress, which is the sun. And it scans and it feels what's coming in and alerts the sun in its psychic awareness of what's coming in. And with Neptune at the end of Pisces, it's super, we're all feeling the weirdest shit coming in. And even weirder, the weird shit that already did come in and already lay its eggs or lay its mRNA, DNA shit, and all these other weird things. And you can feel it all around you right now. It's gonna get more intense over this whole Pisces season. You're going to feel shit you don't want to feel. If you're so focused on feeling the way that you want to feel, you're going to fail. You're going to have to learn how to accept feelings and move out of them and let it go. Move on to the next feeling. Instead of focus on how do you feel better, that's where you're going to get stuck. How do I feel better? How do I feel better? How do I feel better? That's where you're going to get stuck. So if you want to get the real shit every day and how, I mean, I, and let's be real, who fucking called the phone thing hours before me? Like exact, like I'm like, yeah, no, the, go watch the episode. I put up the real, the fucking real on Instagram is fucking at 50,000 views right now in fucking less than 24 hours because I don't fuck around with this shit. If you guys want to keep playing with all these fucking TikTok things and all this bullshit out there and not, you know. Like, I'm not even upset. I'm like laughing. I'm at that. Uh, you know, I have Pluto opposed my son right now. This is the first time in my life, right? Uh, and I was born with Sun Square Pluto. And I'm at a place where I have no problem telling you all like, you guys are fucking getting lost with some really fucking retarded ass people that really don't know anything, that don't, they're so obsessed about trying to prove themselves that they don't even do anything to prove it. They don't even do anything to prove it. They don't have receipts. Like, they, th they say they do, but they don't know how to show them. They don't give you exactly what's going to happen, and then fucking boom, it happens, and you're like, fucking have chills. Like, they, they, they don't understand how deep this art goes. You know? Just remember it was 10 years ago right now that people were fucking on me because I was taking pictures and saying, I'm an astrologer and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a celebrity astrologer. And then people were like, there's no such thing. And now, oh, oh, the, the, they're all cool. But how North No Chiron, right? That's my, that's my wound, right? I'll be very, I'm vulnerable, right? My wound of my whole life is that I get fucked. I show the way. 
other people do it and uh, they get the credit and I don't. I'm fucking like, that's my wound. That's my, always been my wound. And so that's something I got to work on my whole life. You're all lucky you don't have North Node Conjunct Chiron. This is something you're dealing with right now. This is what I deal with every day. So those are the wounds you got to start working out. Like, is it really that there's a problem? Or is it the, 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 the more the wound that you have to work on within yourself, right? Like, like whatever it is on the outside. Like, to be honest with you, I don't even think about this. But because I'm live right now and I'm live on my app, I'm live on YouTube. And I already know that so many people, because I'm always the number one astrology video. So that's the funniest part is I get recognized still in the ways that are overwhelming. But I, but I never feel like I do. You know why? It's because it's like, you know. P p people like to talk about people that are really boring and they don't have anything going and they don't have any receipts and they're really boring and they're really lame. But you know, that's the world we live in. The lamest people get the most attention usually. And so I'm okay with that. I'm focused on being a dad, I'm focused on doing the best astrology and just, you know what, maybe take a note from me on this one. When we are, when you're rocking through Aquarius and Pisces like this, we're surfing through the astral. We're surfing through the craziest spiritual place and the most far out place. This is the farthest away that you can be from from Leo and Virgo, right? The castle and the beautiful fields. Now, trust me, I missed that. I already had my Lancelot life. I've already had my lives in my castles. I've already had my life as knights. But this is where I'm surfing in the astral. And I can tell you when you're surfing in the astral, especially if you're an astrologer and you're a fucking damn good one, it, it's like not being so attached to everything. And you know what? Just showing up randomly like I do, even though I show up every day to high vibe, but to you all in the public and blowing your minds all every time until one day, It'll just make me laugh when you guys finally go, fuck, this motherfucker was right the whole time. He was right again. He was right again. And it wasn't that I'm right. It's that the astrology is. It's just like, who's your interpreter? Somebody trying to prove themselves through some bullshit? Or somebody who knows how to fucking just be honest and deliver to the shit and be honest about their own shit too? We're over the fake facades. One thing I love about Pisces is if you're trying to live a facade, it ain't going to fucking... What's funny is the facade just drops. So you're going to be able to have x-ray vision right now into people's souls and people's lives. And that's not like some advantage. That's the place for you to be like, hey, it's okay. I'm a safe place. You could be real with me about it. And let's see how many people can really start to change in their lives, including my own self. We'll start with myself first, how I can change. I'm being vulnerable and honest with you. Like I'm, I'm a North Node Chiron person. I fucking trust me. Not easy. But, you know, we're all going through it. And, you know, there's space for everybody here. That's the other thing. And, and with Pluto and Aquarius, though, the solutions are not easy and they're going to take a long time. And we still have Pluto coming back into Capricorn this year. So um, everything's temporary at the moment. Okay. Everything. And my last word of advice, especially through this transit, if you're trying to transition and become a Christian or go into some sort of religion and go get baptized and do all that crazy shit, good luck to you. I wish you the best. I really do. I'm just letting you know as an astrologer that you're going to regret it, that you're getting lost. And that's desperate. So, you know. Go put one of my favorite songs from the Eagles is Desperado. Just go be Desperado. All right. And I'm sorry, but you know, that person in that, you know, that church because you, oh, I got to go find somebody. And the, you know, like you're going to go get married and then you're going to go be with that person who has not the same real spiritual belief as you. And you're going to be like, oh, it's because Mars is here. And, da, da, da. and they're going to be like, oh, you're the devil now, you know? And then you know, you're, like, you're going to get, you're going to wake up two years from now and be like, oh my God. Oh no. And, and I'm sorry, but Jesus won't be there the way that you think. Or is it Muhammad that's supposed to be there? Or is it, I don't know who, who's supposed to be there. 
It's it, it's about an understanding of a divine God and 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 the, the, just the highest of all highs, right? The source, the divine source of love, and 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 getting caught up into this cult. The, you know, the, the cults right now, ironically, are the religions at the highest order, and 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 people are feeling so weird. And these I just showed you. You could just watch the look at the charts, and it's just we're so far out that people are looking for a handrail. And they're willing to take the weirdest handrail too. And don't judge yourself if you do take that handrail. I get it. I remember when I was a kid, as I'm shuffling these cards, God bless my dad and his soul. I miss my dad. He passed away, I'm sure you all know, two, two years ago. But we went to Disneyland. I grew up, I grew up here in Orange County. So, California. Long story short, when Indiana Jones the Ride came out, my dad pulled this out of school, and it was like on a Monday. Ironically, it was AT&T that was sponsoring that. So weird. So they gave you this little card, and you could decipher all the shit on the walls, right? All the hieroglyphics. But that wasn't the cool part. The cool part was that my dad, my brother, and I, we ran, and we were the first people on the Indiana Jones ride ever. Like, I'm not kidding. Of course, there was probably some Disneyland people who went on the days before, but I'm saying like the first public people that could be on that ride got to sit in the front. I went on the ride. My dad was a double Aquarius, sun and moon, Libra rising. My brother, Libra rising, uh, son of the 12th Virgo, um, moon and Aries. And we, we go on the ride and then we get off and we had a blast. But there's, I don't know, 10,000 people in line right like going fuck it and so as we're exiting my dad he's like i'm gonna pretend like i'm throwing up and they that that's the scariest ride ever we were like 12 11 something like that i don't remember 10 it was probably 1994 or 93 somebody could probably look that up it was probably nine or ten probably saturn and pisces and everybody believed us my dad played it and we were like crazy young kids holding him up and he's like Bleh, oh my god i might have a heart attack it's crazy and everybody believed it and we just laughed if you can't live in that kind of life i feel sorry for you that's you're not living if you're gonna go be the normal pod person that acts normal and just follows where the line's taking you and how to be and not have a mind that's willing to go out into the far of the universe and not give a flying fuck about things and stop getting so emotionally attached to all these crazy, stupid things in life and, and go enjoy it. Go fucking live your life. Go laugh. I have stories for days. And you know what? No other kids and their dad did that shit. Bet you your dad didn't do that. But that's because you're bad with certain, you're born with certain stars. So you can find all that out in astrology. All right. That's the card for this full moon. I will be doing spiritual dance music and um, I can't do it on YouTube anymore. I have a strike on my account. I am been told I am never allowed to do spiritual dance music on YouTube ever again. So that's another good reason why you should join HiveVibe.tv. We got the Page of Pentacles reversed. Yeah, this is like little things that you think are the end all be all that they're not. That's the way I read this card. It's like, it, you know, it's like having a big, you know, box from Amazon. But inside is like the smallest little thing. And it's like, wait, oh, why did they use? Oh, I thought I was getting some big gift or something. Like, they, like, just stop focusing on things that like, you know, there's nothing there. And stop giving all the little ideas. Stop checking for something that you think that you already know is not that big of a deal right now. Moon card reversed. Yeah, this is like deeper underlying emotions right now, especially it's on a full moon and Virgo, post Saturn and Mercury and Pisces. You know, this is about being mutable, but this is also like whatever you're searching for, whatever you're looking and hoping for to have is is you trying to fulfill some sort of subconscious need that that really is not even going to fulfill you. If anything, it's about probably letting that go, purging that. That'll make you feel better. So if you're like trying to find something, if you're trying to find, I need to find a relationship, I need to find a job, I need to find this, it's probably just like the worst thing. 
I was actually just thinking about this last night. It was exactly this Jupiter transit where we're at right now in Taurus at 10 degrees. When I literally was like flipping out, I was an astrologer, but I wasn't doing the dailies every day yet. And it was 2012 and I, and I knew Jupiter was about to come into my 10th house natally, right? Because I'm 22 degrees midheaven, Taurus. And I was like, fuck, man. I, like right now I was sitting on the beach in Venice Beach doing readings. I was fucking working a side job that I hated. Like I fucking like gave up my hopes. And I'm telling you, it was like the whole time all I had to do was get in front of that camera and do astrology every day. That was it. That was all I had to do. And it was right in front of me the whole time. It's it's not what you need to go search for, especially Jupiter and Taurus is the biggest. I've t- taught this to all my students and I you don't hear me say Jupiter's the planet of good luck and fortune. If anybody's telling you that, they're a TikTok astrologer, okay? Or they're just like a fucking weird astrologer. Or they're like a Kelly Rosano, but anybody, somebody's going to answer what happened to her. Where did she go? Like there's a whole web page. Like did she die? Did I, I think, did she take the shot or something? Because two years ago, she just fucking disappeared. Nobody knows where she's at. And then I went to her page and I felt really bad because like, I'm like, and I saw the fucking shit. I was like, did that chick take the shot and die? Like, I swear it's, it's really weird. But like, you know, that whole kind of style of astrology is done. Okay. The, like Jupiter is not, Jupiter and Taurus is not about good luck. Okay. By, by having some sort of fortune, the fortunes what you already have within you. And doing it. For me, it was as simple as putting my fucking face in front of my computer on a shitty laptop of 2012. Back then, it was like 480p. <laughs> and telling you all, welcome to your inspirational astrology horoscope for this date, blah, blah, blah. I'm your astrologer, Dave Palmer, here to illuminate the collective consciousness. That was all it was, even though I know it's affected millions of people so hope that helps you and uh stop searching start going deeper within stop trying to escape this reality you already are in a reality that's fucking badass and trippy as fuck you really want to go to a weirder place that'll be a bad acid trip or even a worse shroom trip than you've ever experienced in your life appreciate you all see you on high vibe Again, I'm sorry I can't do spiritual dance music on here anymore. The only other possible way is on my Discord channel, which you can find my Discord channel, the Leo King. Um, if you understand how to use Discord. Uh, yeah. Much love. Bye bye. Please.